folks, this is Steve with Nonprofit Ally, and today we're going to talk about website hosting. There can be a lot of confusion when you're looking for someone to host with, and someone that just rely, uh, um, is in the terminology that hosting companies use, and other times it's in the way they're marketing their hosting package, right? So we're just going to quickly go over this. This could be a very complicated um, topic. I'm going to try to make it really simple. And uh, we'll just go over it. Um, we'll give an overview of this. So quick, really quick right here. We're on a hosting page. This is HostGator. They sell hosting, right? They will host your website. When you host a website, that means your website gets installed on their servers for all the web internet to see. Okay. So you can see up here, they have something called web hosting, cloud hosting, WordPress hosting, and then goes reseller, VPS, dedicated domains. Okay. So these are all really familiar terms if you're a web developer or if you do a lot of work with hosts and I'll show you what I mean let's go over here to Bluehost another very popular hosting uh, company go under hosting here again I see shared hosting cloud hosting WordPress hosting WooCommerce hosting VPS hosting dedicated hosting and let's go on one more we'll go to GoDaddy you can see here where it says hosting I'm going to click on that they get a little drop down and there's web hosting wordpress hosting vps virtual private hosting and dedicated so they're all kind of selling the same thing what do you need which service do you need to buy let's go back to this one because it's kind of the easiest website to navigate so we're going to get just right away you're not getting dedicated and you're not getting vps unless you're a company that gets a lot of traffic and you're expecting a high volume of bandwidth to be used skip these two dedicated means you have your own servers one server dedicated to you vps stands for virtual private server which basically means a piece of the server's resources are completely dedicated to your website um, and so we're not going to worry about those so it's going to be expensive as well reseller is um just um if you want to sell hosting you don't have to worry about that but here's where the confusion comes in wordpress hosting cloud hosting website hosting website hosting typically done on a shared platform often called shared hosting which means you and a 20 other websites or whatever are going to share the host you're going to share the server you're going to share the resources this the, the processor speed the memory the ram all that stuff gets shared between multiple websites and if no one's hogging the web no one's one website is hogging those resources it, it works out pretty good and typically it does the hosting company will monitor that and make sure that nobody is um sucking up all the resources more than someone else right so they watch that for you it's usually the cheapest um and it's the easiest to use. Okay, uh, cloud hosting. Let's go to another one since it doesn't seem like I'm promoting. So cloud hosting. Okay, we'll go here. Typically, cloud hosting has a little more resources available. They call it cloud hosting, but it's still a server. It, you're, it's it, it's kind of a misnomer saying that it's on the cloud because shared hosting is on the cloud. You're logging in somewhere else to have it, but typically they have more resources available, right? And you have a little bit of control over how many resources you are using. So if you need more bandwidth or if you need uh, more CPU, probably not CPU, but at least bandwidth and memory. If you need more of that, you could probably turn that up within your cloud hosting, where in shared hosting, you don't have control over that. Um, most likely, for 80% of companies, you don't have to worry about that. But if you'd like to have that control for a little extra money, you can speed up your site and get some more resources dedicated to your, your platform. And again, cloud hosting is still a shared platform. You are still sharing hosting the server with many other websites. And then the other type of hosting, now this is the biggest misnomer. Um, it's the one that drives me nuts. It's WordPress hosting. Let's go ahead. We're just going to click on that. Now we're on a different, this is GoDaddy. Um, so WordPress, we've done web hosting, shared, shared web hosting, cloud hosting, and WordPress hosting. Sounds great, right? I have a WordPress website. I'm going to install it. This is made for WordPress. I'm going to be really fast. There's issues with this, at least for me personally. When you get WordPress hosting, hosting that's dedicated to your WordPress website. That means that that host is adding on a whole bunch of features, a whole bunch of services, not not product. They're not adding much product. They're not making the, the memory faster or the disk space better or anything like that. They are adding services and they're adding services that are already included within WordPress. So what they're doing is they're saying you log into in this case, GoDaddy, and 
from here you can log into your WordPress website. From here you can update your plugins. From here you can change your theme. Well, I got news for you. In WordPress you can already do that. Why add another layer on top of that? Let me show you real quick. This is the back end of a WordPress website. The cleanest way to, to update your WordPress website is do it from within the, word, the website itself. There's other places that you can um, have it automated, right? But they're going to miss things, especially if you buy a premium, um, which means you paid money for your theme. It didn't come free. Then you might actually have to have a direct connection to the developer to install the updates, in which case your automated WordPress updating through GoDaddy or whoever you're using um, may not work. So you're going to have to update it anyways. And it's all here. So why go through your hosting company to do something that you should be able to do right in the application? Why add that layer? Here's the other drawback. WordPress hosting typically does not come with what's called a cPanel. Okay, so when you go and you host with GoDaddy or Bluehost and you get their WordPress hosting you're gonna have all these tools you can log into WordPress you can update your plugins you can um, update your theme you can have some of this automated that's all really good stuff but like I said you can already do that in WordPress so okay so big deal the big drawback is you don't have a cPanel. A cPanel allows me to access my files. It allows me to access the database. It allows me to add domain names, um, not domain names, add emails, right? All through a cPanel. cPanel stands for control panel. Without that, and I've run across this with clients who have WordPress hosting. I couldn't get into their files. I couldn't change stuff that needed to be fixed. When the site broke, I was powerless. I had no ability to go in and update um, their HT access file, which is a file that kind of controls how your website works, right? I couldn't get to it. I couldn't export their site. I couldn't take their website off of their host and put it on a new one. I couldn't migrate it, right? So you're, you're, you end up paying more for WordPress hosting, you get redundant features, and you miss out on the cPanel. Let me show you what the cPanel looks like. Here I am logged into cPanel. You see panels are universal. This is a pretty standard application. Basically, I'm on my server, and from here, I can go to my file manager. I can click on here, and it pops open in a new window. I can see all the files on the server. I can actually access the files that are on my website, I can see them. With WordPress hosting, WordPress hosting, not WordPress, but with WordPress hosting, I don't have access to this. I can't get in here. If I need to get to the database, right, I can do that here. Here's all my databases. If I need to back up my database, I can back up my database. Can't do that with WordPress hosting. Domains, um, actually not domains, let's go down to emails. If I wanted to add an email, so let's say I am, um, I'm Stevick. So let's say I'm Stevick.com, which is not me. Someone else has that domain, but let's just say I own Stevick.com and I want to have info at Stevick.com as my email. I can simply create that right here, right? It's pretty simple to do. When you have something like a, a WordPress host, you don't always have access to doing that. cPanel gives you ultimate control. Don't give it up. It's worth it. The automated features of a WordPress hosting package in my opinion, does not outweigh the features you get with the cPanel. And in order to get a cPanel, you need to have a shared hosting plan or web hosting in this case, right? Shared hosting or cloud hosting. When you go to buy your hosting, call them up. Tell them it's very important for you to have a cPanel. You need to get access to your files. You need to be able to create um, additional email accounts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, to me, that's the most important thing, especially as a web developer. If you ever need help and you need to hire someone to help you with their website and they can't have access to a cPanel, they'll be limited in, in how they can help you. All right, cool. I hope that explains the difference between all these hosting packages. I, If you're new and you got a small business or a small nonprofit, get basic shared hosting and you know and make sure it has a cPanel. You can get cloud hosting if you really want to, you know, spend a little more money. I have had cloud hosting. I didn't really find it to be that beneficial. Um, right now, I'm on a VPS because I deal with websites a lot. I like my VPS. It's very nice, but it's expensive, so not necessarily what you need. Um, 
And so between these two, go with that. Skip out on this WordPress hosting. I I have yet to see the benefit of it. Um, but again, just my personal opinion. And I hope that is helpful for you. I hope that helps you differentiate between the two or between the multiple different types of hosting. And I hope it clarifies a decision that you're about to make. Okay, folks. Thanks so much. Hey folks, I hope you found that video helpful. And if you did, please feel free to like, share, or comment just below here. And actually right there below me, you can subscribe to this channel and get regular updates on every video that we upload. Also over there on the right hand side, there are some other videos you may enjoy watching. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you subscribe and have a great day.